Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, aka VHS82 Apostrophe, with episode two of The Walking Dead, season one. Um, our uh, attempt at a great deep dive. Um, episode two entitled Guts, uh, for obvious reasons, right? Um, uh, because there are a lot of guts involved in this episode, um, which is really cool. Um, some of the things, you know, when we look at these episodes, by the way, watch this one in black and white as well. And that just may be a continuing theme. Not that I will never watch these in color, but uh, I'm telling you, this episode was absolutely fantastic uh, in black and white. Uh, a couple scenes in particular I hope not to forget about, but uh, uh, Michelle uh, McLaren, um, the director, uh, known for really three episodes uh, in seasons uh, one, two, and four, uh, pretty much already dead, season two, and A in season four. Um, Frank Darabont writing, uh, which is always good. This one is a much shorter episode, and it flies, man, uh, but 45 minutes runtime. Uh, one of the things, uh, not only will I look at the director, uh, if I can momentarily, uh, and Michelle here, um, one of the things that stood out to me, um, big time was uh, co-executive producer on the X-Files, which I am currently reviewing uh, in the midst of season three at the moment. Uh, 46 episodes though, spanning from season seven to nine. I thought that was pretty cool. In fact, she actually directed one, John Doe from season uh, nine, episode seven. Also was a production manager on the Omen for The Awakening. I'll pretty much always stay genre related when I do these things. I'm not gonna just list the entire filmography of someone, but if it's if something within the genre strikes me, and with the X Files is obvious. Um, she also did one episode of Westworld, which is pretty pretty cool. Um, right. So anyway, so uh, I thought that was very interesting. Um, the standout guest um, is Michael Rooker, of course, as Merle. We first meet Merle. Uh, and uh, they're on top of the rooftop, right? Um, and uh, as far as Michael Rooker, of course, most people probably know him from Guardians of the Galaxy. Maybe you know him from uh, Cliffhanger. Um, but if you wanna see him pour on some real acting chops, you gotta have a strong stomach for this. Um, I, I can't think of anything better than Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. Um, that what he does in this film is absolutely remarkable as an actor. I will say this though, um, you really got to have a pretty strong stomach. Uh, this one's pretty intense, um, but it does it does get across. This episode uh, guts more than any, and I'm gonna I'll showcase this too if it seems to apply. Um, but it really seemed to be a throwback for me to Dawn uh, Romero's Dawn of the Dead, um, not just the uh, original of course, um, but the remake as well. Um, you know, you're stuck in a department store. Uh, you've got the scene when they're going to escape the department store and you're backing up the truck in quick manner to uh, lift up the doorways and quickly exit the department store into the truck and, you know, get out of Dodge quick. Um, so it's kind of a combination vibe feel of both the original Dawn and the remake. And if you listen to the commentary with uh, Greg Nicotero and uh, the director, uh, they uh, Greg says as much. Um, although he doesn't refer to the Dawn remake, um, but I thought there was a heavy vibe there too uh, in that. Um, the intensity level. Um, look, there's something different about black and white. Um, we're getting ready for a show um, for Body Bags uh, tonight, in fact. Well, this will be, it'll already be in, have dropped by the time you see this episode. Um, but getting ready for an, epi uh, an episode top five slashers. And so I revisited, um, uh, revisited High Tension. I can say this because this won't even be dropped for a few weeks. Um, but I revisited High Tension, which is in my top five. And I watched it in black and white. I forgot that the settings on the TV were still set black and white because we had just watched The Walking Dead. And I thought, well, whoa, whoa, that, that, this might be interesting. I'll watch it in black and white. That movie was out of this world in black and white. That's all I'll say. Uh, the, the scenes in the woods and the chase and everything, and that segues back into The Walking Dead. So I don't want to get terribly off track. Um, there's two, two really standout scenes 
for me that work in black and white. Uh, in the beginning, our, our intro um, to the credits, uh, we find Lori and Shane um, will have a little meet up in the woods. Um, their relationship, which now we're starting to learn, um, is going to cause some major issues uh, here shortly. Um, I can't remember how long it takes in the arc. But I know there's there we're gonna have to cross this bridge at some point here, probably sooner than later. Um, but uh, she leaves the camp initially, uh, going to scavenge for mushrooms. Walk as she's walking through the woods, she starts to have this sense that someone is walking, uh, or watching her, following her. Um, the director said the intent was a zombie. We wanted to be made feel like there was a zombie, perhaps deep in the woods that was eyeing her. I have to tell you, man, watching this in black and white, uh, this looked this looked like your perfect slasher film where our lead girl is uh, is just making her way through the woods knowing someone is eyeing her. Um, the killer is on the trail, right? Uh, it, it's, uh, that, that just aesthetically was remarkable uh, and really helped create a, a really intense vibe. Of course, we know she's there to meet Shane uh, for a little rendezvous of sorts, right? And then you break into the credits and uh, we get, uh, let's see, we did jump ahead a little bit and watch a few other episodes, which I don't like doing necessarily because I don't want to get things jumbled up. But uh, pretty sure uh, we pick up in the beginning here with uh, getting uh, Rick out of the tank. Of course, it's Glenn that uh, goes out of his way. And this will come back, of course, later on um, in terms of decisions Rick will make. But this is uh, really getting really getting to know Rick a little bit more. Of course, Glenn and his relationship. He'll Glenn will get him um, after having scaled a quite a quite a lengthy ladder up uh, into a building. Will get him into the department store. Uh, of course, when he does, um, his first meeting with the West Andrea uh, and others, T Dog and, uh, and Morales and others. Um, it's not quite the most friendliest. Um, first meeting as a result of Rick uh, having to shoot his gun and whatnot has drawn a lot of zombies. Uh, and of course, we will find out that they're only there on it, like a scavenging hunt. Um, and so Rick's crossing the path with this group is sort of faded in the sense that ultimately, not to give things away entirely, but I would imagine most of my audience have seen these things a million times. Uh, it seems faded in the sense that this is going to be the vehicle to get him to his family. Um, and so we'll, we'll get past that initially. Another scene that works really great in black and white is as the zombies begin to pile up out the, the door, the glass window ways, doorways, once they bust through that first layer and then there's the second layer and they're in the store, um, that looks pretty amazing in black and white as well. Um, we'll eventually get up to the rooftop. We'll eventually meet Merle. I'm trying not, I won't try not to get too far ahead of myself here in terms of the characters, but the other scene in black and white that is absolutely remarkable is Merle's up there shooting his gun off, like, you know, another nod to Dawn of the Dead, right? Shooting zombies from the top of the mall. And uh, and he's, his attitude is such that, man, this, this dude is a loose cannon if there ever were such a thing. And there is immediate conflict between him and T-Dog, and which results in, Mer in um, er, uh, Merle uh, laying it heavy on, on T-Dog. Uh, but that, that brings Rick in, and Rick ultimately is able to subdue Merle, get him handcuffed to the uh, steel pipe. And there's this great moment, man, where the camera is down low, looking straight up. And you see Merle against the uh, sky. Of course, I'm watching it in black and white. Um, and it, it is just such a phenomenal, just seeing him in frame like that with the sky above him. And he is towering over the group just momentarily. But then eventually you will see once he's, you know, handcuffed to the pipe, him and Rick, their faces uh, fill up most of the frame. And, and in black and white, I'm telling you, it is amazing just to see uh, these two face to face as Rick is trying to. And uh, Rick just woke up out of a out of a coma into this world turned upside down, and he's lecturing, um, get, you know, lecturing uh, Merle 
on uh, the idea that this world is not the same world as they might have inhabited once before, meaning how we classify, identify, relate to people is not necessarily the same anymore. We're all basically, well, as he says, divided into two categories of meat, and that is it. Okay, we're all food. We're all um, uh, cannon fodder in terms of food for zombies, right? And so a lot of how we identify with one another ought to just go right out this, you know, freaking way um and because the only way they're going to survive is by relying on one another and we'll see this tested the tension always is there right throughout the series um in terms of your good guys and bad guys which sometimes i know some criticisms will probably be uh need more zombies less of the human conflict um and there's a tension there probably um you know i and I'll probably agree with that from time to time, I'm sure. Um, like I said, we jumped a couple episodes out ahead and I was already starting to get that anxiety level. Like, uh, you know, where are the zombies? Where are the zombies? Uh, I want more zombie action. Now, you'll get a really good one uh, a couple episodes down. And we didn't go to, I think we only went four out to episode four. Um, so Michael Rooker, um, just in, in, incredible. Um, Initially, they, they think they got a way out of here, uh, out of the, their first option to get out of the, um, uh, is out of the department stores into the sewer systems. That will be a no-go. And as the zombies come through the first layer, they, they don't have any time. And so ultimately what they lean on is, is covering themselves. Rick and Glenn will cover themselves in guts, in hopes uh, that they can just camouflage themselves in zombie smell and get a vehicle and be able to get the rest of the group and get out of there. And so that involves grabbing a zombie from outside, a dead one, hauling them in and uh, just ax chopping this thing up, which is a pretty dramatic moment because even though these people have already been dealing with having to kill zombies, having one that's already dead and just going through the dismemberment process of chopping up a person uh, it, it was quite an interesting moment. Um, in fact, Rick even, you know, humanizes the, the moment by pulling his ID out and, uh, and and relating to everyone who this guy is and to remind themselves that they're all people with identities and there's probably not much separating the moment they're alive and the moment they could be like this person on the floor. Um a little bit of black comedy there when there i think glenn is the one that makes the point that he's an o or organ donor um but they will cover themselves and uh for the most part the the, the it'll work um except it starts to rain <laughs> starts to rain right when it rains it pours um and uh but they've gotten a uh, well enough distance they're able to make a, a break and climb um over a fence and uh get the vehicle haul uh get back and uh get get the rest out of the department store unfortunately when t-dog goes up to the roof to get merle i think we're, we're sort of led to believe that's his point um he will trip and fall and the key will get lost down a uh a drainage pipe of sorts um which leaves merle chained uh and there's no time to mess uh, T Dog's got to get out of there now. He'll he'll chain the the door to keep the zombies from getting up there, um, or at least buy Merle enough time. I don't know to figure something. I don't know what you're gonna figure out. So it is it's an interesting and you know um, not really wanting to jump out that far ahead or anything. You know, so that leaves you sort of like a cliffhanger, right? You know, this character is gonna come back at some point. Um, when and how is yet to be determined, but. Um, yeah um so you know they are able to get out of there and uh and haul you know themselves out of atlanta and i think that's where the title or the end credits pop in and so we're sort of left with with that of a cliffhanger narrow escape uh to get out of atlanta um and that's that's where we are at the moment and we'll be getting into uh episode uh three in a week just uh looking at my notes real quick um uh the only last thing i'll just mention real quick is just the evolution just seeing what the zombies are capable of doing um 
this, this has been some, uh, somewhat of an evolutionary leap for this show. They sort of just take into, um, a, a assume zombies can already do certain things that say in George Romero's world took multiple films to see that evolutionary process work its way out. Uh, they can already do some of the things. Now, they may not be as technically savvy as we see sometimes zombies say like burial ground or something. Um, but I, you know, that is interesting to watch too. What can these zombies, and the fact that the uh, zombies eat animals, right? We already saw them tear into a horse, but here in the sewer system, as they're looking for an alternative rod out, they see one eating on a rat. Um, I'm sure the zombie would rather be eating on a person, but. So these are just interesting things within the genre that is the zombie genre. Um, so, yeah, so uh, I didn't mention Guts, of course, is the, is the name, but it drops November 7th, uh, 2010 is when it aired for the first time. Uh, so there you go, and then there. Um, always try to keep these a little bit shorter than what they do, and as I promised, with this particular series, we'll always end off with Go Dogs. This is not a dream. Not a dream. You might be useful to me.